Hello and welcome everyone to the 2020-2021 uh, Better Buildings webinar series. Um, if we could go to the next slide, to our intro slide, um, you are in the right place if you are here to learn um, how to make your data center better um, from stories from the field. Uh, in this webinar uh, today, as well as in the Better Buildings webinar series, we're profiling best practices of our Better Buildings Challenge and Alliance partners and other organizations um, working to improve energy efficiency in buildings and then today specifically data centers. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so my name is Rachel Shepard and I'll be your moderator for today. I led the Better Buildings Data Center Challenge and Accelerator for the past three years and I'm excited to share with you results um, and lessons learned from, from that effort. Next slide. Um, so uh, today we'll be talking about data centers and in 2015 the Better Buildings uh, program launched a Data Center Accelerator which was a five-year effort uh, where DOE partnered with organizations that had data centers to do a deep dive um, into infrastructure energy opportunities. Um, for this particular webinar and for this effort, when we talk about infrastructure energy, uh, we're talking about all energy end uses in the building except for IT energy use. Um, but we're excited today to announce the results of our five-year effort. And so on average, the 21 partners that participated in the program saw a 36% improvement in their data center's um, infrastructure energy intensity, and that realizes uh, about $3.9 million in annual cost savings. So we'll talk about some of the strategies that those partners did to um, get those uh, accomplishments. Next slide, please. Um, as I mentioned before, the Data Center Accelerator was a five-year effort with 21 partners that made a commitment to that accelerator. However, Better Building still has a targeted, targeted effort to help partners with their data centers. Um, data centers, um, as I'm sure you all know, um, are packed with, uh, packed with a big punch um, because uh, when you're looking for energy savings, there are, a lot, there are potentially a lot there with um, some short paybacks. Um, typically, we see data centers could improve their infrastructure energy use by 20 to 40 percent. Um, and so, if you are if you aren't a Better Buildings partner, but you're interested, please come and join Better Buildings, and we can help you improve your data center. Um, and if you are a uh, a Better Buildings partner, that's awesome. And please feel free to reach out to your Better Buildings point of contact to ask for some assistance on how to improve your data center, especially if you're inspired today by some of the things that we're talking about. Uh, next slide, please. So when you reach out to your um, to your point of contact, or if um, if you join, um, you can get some assistance from some of our data center experts at DOE that can help you and your organization, um, you know, figure out some of the barriers that you may be facing around data centers because they are really complex. We can help facilitate discussion with stakeholders, such as with your IT group. That's going to be key for um, helping improve your data center and um, also help review you know, project design and specifications and other recommendations uh, for resources that you can use, which we'll be talking about in a few minutes. So just wanna put that in there um, in the front of this webinar. Um, you know, once you can kind of go through things, um, if you are inspired or interested, feel free to reach out and we are here to, to help. Um, so if you can go to the next slide, please. Um, so if you aren't familiar with, um, or if you haven't attended a Better Buildings webinar before, um, they're very interactive and we're excited to use um, an interactive platform to um, hear from you all. Um, the platform is called Slido um, and we'll be using it for both the Q&A as well as for some polling. Um, so if you all could take a minute right now and go to www.slido.com, S-L-I-D-O dot uh, com, and use, you can use it on your phone, you can use it on a new uh, window browser um, on the internet, and, uh, and then put in the uh, event code, which is hashtag DOE. So just put DOE, it should be at the top of the, of the browser. Um, if you'd like to ask any of our panelists questions, please submit them through the Q&A um, section of that, um, of Slido. And then there's also a polling uh, question, which is another section that will pop up. Um, you can also give a thumbs up. Um, you can click a thumbs up icon um, if you have any, if you like somebody else's question and you want to um, to make sure that it's answered. So again, please make sure you're in slido.com, hashtag DOE, because um, we're going to be using it right now. Um, so if you could go to the next slide. 
which will pull up our first poll question. So we'd like to learn a little bit more about you. Um, and we are, um, the first uh, poll question that comes up is on a scale of one to five, how familiar are you with data centers? Uh, five, very familiar. Um, you have a role to play in a data center. Three, you're, you work in a data center, you're around it, or one, you're new to the sector. It looks like the most popular answer is three, so somewhat aware. So that's really good because I think we'll be um, you know, covering some advanced topics in here that could be helpful. But then also a range of you know somewhat familiar and very familiar. So that's great. Looks like we've gotten most of our responses. So let's actually go to the next poll. We've got we've got several polls. The next um, uh, poll that's going to come up is what type of data center that you work in. Um, is it um, you don't that you don't work in one, a small one, enterprise, so a larger scale, maybe a co-location like multiple tenants high performance computing or a hyperscale data center. I'm seeing the main the main um, response at this time is is not working one, but excited to learn more and that's great. You're in the right place because uh, we'll be talking about all different types of data centers. And then some enterprise wise, which makes sense for a lot of um, organizations. I'll give it a few more minutes to see or a few more seconds to see if anybody else will respond. Awesome. All right. Well, you're in the right place to learn more about data centers. And we've got two more polls before we, um, before I introduce our first, our panelists and our first speaker. So the next question, the next poll question is, um, which of the following departments or business units uh, best describes your role in an organization? So it could be, are you um, in the IT group, facilities, sustainability? Finance, leadership, procurement. Awesome. See a lot of sustainability, which is appropriate for better buildings. Um, but I think we'll be sharing a lot um, about how you can work with other stakeholders in your within your organization, especially your IT group. That'll be important. Also seeing facilities and um, other popping up um, high on the list. All right, well, thanks for responding to that. We've got one more poll question. So thank you guys for being so interactive. The last poll question is, um, have you ever been a part of a team that has implemented an energy efficiency project in a, um, um, in a data center or otherwise? And the immediate response is yes, a few no, which is good, because we'll be talking about a lot of opportunities today with data centers that maybe you could get involved in in your organization. Awesome. Well, great. It sounds like there's a great group out there for this webinar, and I'm excited to now talk about um, some of our presenters and introduce our first speaker for today. Um, please remember to keep Slido open so that um, you can put in your questions at any time that you have for any of the panelists. Um, so I want to, um, so I'm excited to introduce today our two speakers, Hannah Stratton and da uh, David Ducey. Um, Hannah is with Lawrence Berkeley National Lab and David is with um, the Maryland um, Energy Administration. So our first speaker, Hannah, um, is a program manager at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab's energy technology uh, area. She supports a number of programs within um, their portfolio, conducting research and analysis, and providing programmatic management, development, and support. Um, this includes um, the Center of Expertise for Energy Efficiency and Data Centers, as well as eProject Builder, uh, both uh, websites and tools that are can be helpful um, for you all to, to use. Um, and then also um, DOE is an energy efficiency standard. She has an MBA with a focus on energy from UC Davis and a BA in political science from UC uh, Santa Barbara. Uh, welcome, Hannah, and take it away. Thanks, Rachel. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us today. And I guess uh, next slide, please. Um, so today I'm going to be talking a bit about the uh, Data Center Accelerator Toolkit um, that was a big outcome of the uh, Better Buildings uh, Data Center Challenge and also a resource that we've recently developed here at the Center of Expertise at LBNL. Uh, next slide, please. 
So the Data Center Accelerator, Accelerator Toolkit has a few different components, um, all geared around helping organizations, of course, improve the energy efficiency of their data center. So the first are a series of web pages that explore different barriers and opportunities to data center energy efficiency based on different data center types. Um, and I'm gonna get into each of these um, in uh, following a slide in a little more detail. Um, it also showcases our interactive uh, business case module that we recently have developed at the Center of Expertise. And lastly, there's also a series of sector-specific um, fact sheets that also explore uh, barriers, um, needs, and opportunities for energy efficiency in data centers within those specific sectors and explore you know, dynamics that are going on in higher education and government and um, commercial sectors, among others. So really, the toolkit gives you kind of a comprehensive way to um, you know, slice and dice your, your energy efficiency and, and look at it from different, um, different angles, you know, by, by the type of data center that you're operating, by, you know, who you are in the data center, which stakeholder you are, and also um, by sector. Uh, next slide, please. So here's a, a look at the uh, sector, or sorry, the data center type um, uh, toolkit. So you can see we have small data centers, colos, enterprise, HPC, and hyperscale. Um, and you know the reason for developing these resources based on data center type is that depending on what types of data centers um, uh, you know your organization is operating, the barriers and energy efficiency opportunities are you know going to vary. You know opportunities in a small data center are probably going to be quite different. Um, from those in hyperscale and HPC, and the barriers will also be different. And, you know, likewise, when you're working with a colo facility and you have, you know, a certain contractual agreement and, a, a, you know, you have different stakeholders than you might have if it's an enterprise-owned um, owned data center. So I encourage everyone to check out um, the toolkit on the Better Buildings website, and you can, you know, look, hook around, see what types of data centers your organization, you know, has, and look at the barriers, solutions, and there's also some great resources, many of which are targeted to those data center types, and also some partner examples of how they have successfully implemented energy efficiency in their data center. Next slide. And additionally, there are the sector fact sheets, um, as well as a bunch of other resources, some of which are from the Center of Expertise here at LBNL, and others, um, you know, from other organizations, and also related to the accelerator. Uh, next slide. So yeah, look at the sector, the sector fact sheets. Um, we explored the state and local, um, federal government, higher education, commercial, and industrial sectors, and really explored what are the trends that are going on in each of these sectors that are driving the demand for data. I think you know, just one example. Um, you know, we all can. Especially with this, with COVID, we can you know understand that you know higher education there already may have been a move towards online learning, but now that's even more amplified. And so you know these the the need for data is you know <laughs> growing rapidly in all of these sectors. But you know depending on um, you know the organizational structure and dynamics, the data center types that these that organizations in these sectors have, um, they're going to face uh, different and unique challenges. Next slide, please. And so now I'm going to talk a little bit about the business case module that we've developed at the Center of Expertise. But before I get into exactly kind of what that module does and what the content of it is, I want to talk a little bit about why we felt we needed to develop, um, develop the module in the first place. So I know we have a lot of sustainability managers or um, people who work in sustainability on the call today and also people who sound like they have, you know, experience in energy efficiency projects. And, you know, there's a range of people who are you know, are very familiar with data centers and maybe less familiar. Um, so I think, you know, there's a lot of resources out there about, um, you know, how to implement an energy efficiency project and even sort of taking it through a business case lens. But data center energy efficiency is really unique um, to other energy efficiency projects because data centers are mission critical operations. And, you know, the primary focus is always going to be making sure that the data center is 
ultimately able to meet the needs and objectives of the, of the organization. Um, uptime is very important. And, you know, this mission critical nature and the, the severe cost, both monetary and also, you know, reputation wise, potentially from outages, um, really can create a sense of risk aversion when it comes to data center energy efficiency. Um, and additionally, because of the way that a lot of, um, you know, data center energy bills are paid, there's can be quite a big split incentive problem between IT and facilities, or if you're, you know, working in a colo, you know, maybe you're not even actually putting your energy bill. Um, but I think as Rachel mentioned, data centers are quite energy intensive, and so they really are well positioned to deliver substantial savings. And in many data centers, especially in small data centers, there is a lot of low hanging fruit. Um, and as I kind of present our business case module, I want everyone to keep in mind that, you know, of course, the individual context of an organization is going to, you know, influence, um, you know, the experience that a project champion may have. So, you know, we tried to create something that we felt was really reflective of what's going on in the data center space. Um, but, you know, not every organization has the same list of stakeholders um, that we developed and, you know, things can vary a little bit. But um, yeah, hopefully it will be a helpful resource in helping um, you or others in your organization advance energy efficiency projects. Next slide, please. So here's a sort of a look at how we um, developed the business case module. So it is an interactive web resource that enables stakeholders to identify the drivers and the motivating factors that, um, you know, could help could motivate them and also others in their organization to pursue a data center energy efficiency project. It also looks at what, who the key stakeholders are that need to be engaged and also helps them, you know, anticipate and overcome barriers that may be encountered during the planning and implementation of their data center energy efficiency project. And we really felt that it made sense to take a stakeholder centric view. Um, on the left hand side, we have the drivers that we developed. Um, so what are some of the main reasons why people would want to pursue energy efficiency in their data centers? Um, and, you know, some of these are obvious, but some are, you know, you may not realize that it is a driving factor or maybe the stakeholder who benefits from that driving factor didn't actually know that that was a benefit of data center energy efficiency. Um, and you can see that we've mapped the barriers and the drivers to stakeholders specifically because we felt that you know, it really starts with the people that you need and or want to engage on the pro in the project. So, you know, taking this, this view of, you know, not just what are the drivers, what are the barriers, and who are the stakeholders, but, you know, why specifically are these drivers and these barriers important for, say, a facility manager, an IT manager, um, or, you know, any of the other stakeholders that we have down on here, including a sustainability manager. Next slide, please. So yeah, as I mentioned before, the goal is to help um, project champions shepherd a project through their organization by identifying drivers, winning over stakeholders whose buy-in is critical to advancing the project, and also identifying those stakeholders early, early on um, in the project development process. And lastly, um, overcoming barriers. Next slide. So getting a little bit into the drivers, um, you can see here that we have uh, quite a few and they were developed uh, based on our own research and discussions as well as some input from a focus group. So, you know, for the drivers, we want to understand what are the motivating factors and, of course, realizing that these, you know, the importance of these drivers is going to vary depending on your organization and also the stakeholders that you're engaging. So just we can, can maybe talk through a couple of these. We don't have to go through all of them. Um, but the first one is pretty obvious, um, you know, reducing operating costs. That's a lot of, that's a big reason why people pursue energy efficiency projects, um, you know, generally, not just in data centers. Um, but the interesting about, you know, reducing operating costs in data centers is that, you know, they're often, uh, most, most often, but not always, uh, the data center energy bill is put in by your facilities department, um, but maybe not by IT. So, you know, your IT department may be really or probably is, you know, prioritizing making sure that there is adequate um, capacity so that they can do their job and meet the needs of an organization. But at the end of the day, if they're not paying the energy bill, um, you know, they're not going to be particularly 
um, concerned potentially about the operating costs. Um, you know, they're more interested in making sure that, um, you know, everything is reliable and that uptime is continuous. And so that can really engender some risk aversion, especially when they're not the ones reaping the benefit of those reduced operating costs. Um, you know, thinking about uh, the fact that we have a lot of sustainability managers on the call here, um, you know, saving energy in accordance with organizational values. That may be a big one for sustainability managers, right? I think, you know, you may be looking to market some of the improvements that you've made in your data center. That also could be an interest of, say, a CEO in the organization. Um, and so we really get into, you know, what are these drivers? Why do they motivate certain stakeholders? And we look at it not just from you know, how is this generally a driver, but why specifically is, um, you know, increasing reliability and resiliency, for example, a driver for an IT manager. Uh, next slide, please. And then similarly looking at the barriers. So we looked at institutional, technical, and financial barriers. Um, and, you know, I think it's important to uh, think about these things, you know, well in advance of beginning your project so that when you are, you know, potentially pitching a project to somebody in the C-suite or um, a cross-functional project team that, you know, you've already considered these things and taking them and have taken them into account, um, you know, as you sort of have developed your energy efficiency um, proposal. You know, if you, if you know that you have a particularly risk-averse um, CEO, maybe you want to choose ECMs that um, you know, are, are well proven, or if you have, you know, if there's some internal reporting um, and guidance from your finance department um, about paybacks, maybe you need to, you know, choose an ECM that has, um, you know, has proven short paybacks. So they're just these types of considerations that really can um, uh, matter when not just crafting the project and, you know, the technical components, but also, um, you know, the way you frame, the way you frame the project benefits. Um, you know, I think speaking the language of the person who you're trying to engage is obviously important. So if they report by certain metrics and you can, um, you know, put the project proposal into those terms, that's always a good idea. Um, so the goal of our barriers section is to, you know, talk about what some of these barriers are, but also talk about what are the opportunities to overcome these barriers in, in data centers. And then we also provide a bunch of resources that can help a project champion overcome those barriers. Um, so just I'll look at some of these here. Um, the first one, no one person tasked um, with energy efficiency. You know, that's definitely not always the case, but it can be the case where it's not explicitly written in somebody's job description to take up energy efficiency improvements. And, you know, that can often mean that the project champion is taking this up and it's not necessarily something that they really have a lot of time for or a lot of um, allocated resources. Another really big one um, that I think applies to most stakeholders in data centers is misaligned interests. Um, and, you know, they don't have to be completely at odds with one another, but, um, you know, for facilities, they're trying to make sure that everything is coming along and also probably that the operating costs are within um, their bounds, whereas IT, you know, may be more likely to want to oversize things in their data center to make sure that they have capacity for growth. Um, whereas, you know, a CEO is just wants to make sure that everything is, um, you know, is meeting organizational de demands and needs. So um, there's just a lot going on. You know, every stakeholder approaches, um, you know, approaches, uh, will approach the project, you know, kind of through their own lens. So it's just important to think about, you know, what are some of these barriers that may be specific to um, to certain stakeholders. Uh, next slide, please. And yeah, so taking a look at our, our stakeholder um, section, really we, you know, want to hone in on who is this person in the data center? Um, you know, why, why is their role relevant for data centers and why should they care? Um, and then talk about what are their drivers, what are their barriers, and also, what are some resources that are targeted for that stakeholder? So, and I think I already mentioned this, hopefully I'm not being too repetitive, but, you know, we don't just talk about the drivers generally, but we talk about, you know, why these, um, why operating cost reduction is a driver for the facility manager um, and dig in a little bit deeper um, at each level. Um, and for the resources, we, you know, have found things that are, um, you know, helpful for, 
every stakeholder or may even be helpful for the project champion to engage a certain stakeholder. You know, we have resources on, you know, why would a CFO care about their data center energy efficiency, for example. So some of the resources are targeted for that specific stakeholder and others are targeted for, um, you know, the project champion to be able to effectively engage that stakeholder and get them on board with their energy efficiency project. Next slide. So just some key takeaways that we've kind of learned, um, you know, as we've developed this business case for energy efficiency and data centers um, module, which I hope everybody will go um, and check out at the COE, is that, you know, data center energy efficiency projects can require a really con concerted and coordinated effort. Um, these can be, I mean, they can be simple projects. There, of course, are always simpler, um, you know, inexpensive and relatively easy ECMs um, that anybody can implement. But, you know, also it can be uh, quite a task. And so project champions really need to consider the drivers and the barriers for the stakeholders that they plan to engage in the project and, you know, take initiative to share information and educate others and certainly should assume familiarity with the topic. You know, there's a really good chance that leadership in your organization maybe just doesn't even know what types of energy and monetary savings opportunities there are in data centers. Um, also, early engagement of stakeholders and establishing a cross-functional project team can be a really great way to facilitate mutual understanding and also achieve buy-in and make sure that everyone's concerns are, you know, being taken into account and addressed as you develop the project. And, you know, measuring the project outcomes in a way that is, that, you know, documents them well, that can help pave the way to future projects is also really important. Um, you know, I think that previous experience with energy efficiency projects, especially in data centers, um, can be a good way to, you know, establish precedent and, of course, hopefully, you know, one successful project will lead to another. So ultimately, we hope that our business case resource can help project champions on their path towards data center energy efficiency. Next slide. And um, just wanted to give an overview of our website. If you're not familiar, you can find us at datacenters.ldl.gov. And um, our business case, um, you can see it's right there on our featured work on our homepage, so it'll be easy for you to find. And we also have a bunch of new resources that we, that we recently have um, released on our website. We have our IT equipment efficiency tool um, and some thermal guidelines and temperature measurements. Um, the business case module, of course, and also a new air management packages tool. So we encourage you to check us out and also feel free to email us, follow us on Twitter, and you also can sign up for our newsletter on our homepage. Um, we send out updates on our, our webinars and uh, new tools and resources. So thank you all so much, and I look forward to seeing what David has to say about his case study. Yeah, thanks, Hannah. That was that was awesome. I really got, encourage everyone to um, to go to the that business case website um, uh, because I think it's really interactive and I think has a lot of great information. Um, so next, uh, we'll hear from David. David Juicy uh, currently manages the Data Center Energy Efficiency Grant, the Lock, uh, the Lockton Loan Program, and assists with the Maryland Energy Infrastructure Program uh, for the Men uh, Maryland Energy Administration. David has a Bachelor's of Science in Energy, uh, Energy Business and Finance from Penn State University. David, take it away. Looking forward to hearing your presentation. Thank you for the introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I am an energy program manager at the Maryland Energy Administration, and I run the Data Center Energy Efficiency Grant Program. Today, I'll talk to you about the Data Center Energy Efficiency Grant Program, results of the program, and some of the best practices that I've learned over the last couple of years. The Data Center Program is now in its fifth cycle and is designed to support Maryland's robust and growing information technology sector. The program has gone through some changes over the last couple of years. The program provides funding on a competitive basis to encourage the implementation of cost-effective energy efficiency technologies and data centers located in the state of Maryland. Grants typically range from $20,000 all the way up to $200,000 per eligible project, subject to funding availability. They're designed to cover up to 50% of the net customer cost, up to $200,000, for innovative and cost-effective energy efficiency solutions. 
Next slide, please. The program is open to any commercial, state, local government, or nonprofit data center located or is being constructed within the state of Maryland. The data center must have a data floor size of at least 1,000 square feet. MEA defines a data center as a facility used to house only computers, servers, networking systems, IT components, and supporting infrastructure. Next slide, please. Some of the eligible measures that can be funded uh, through the Data Center Energy Efficiency Program are server virtualization, airflow optimization, aisle containment, lighting controls, uninterruptible power supplies, motors and variable frequency drives, HVAC upgrades, building insulation and envelope improvements, and any additional measures uh, that can be considered on a case-by-case -case basis as long as there is a reduction in energy. Uh, note this program is only currently for energy efficiency measures. Um, hopefully renewables will be allowed in, in the upcoming years. Next slide, please. Some of the pro uh, project requirements uh, that are set forth through the program are being able to identify and monitor power usage effectiveness. Uh, they must submit an energy analysis or energy savings calculations associated with the project. Uh, they must submit utility bills or any submeter data. The project must be cost effective, uh, which MEA defines as the project's lifetime net energy benefits are at least equal to or greater than the cost of the project. The project must reduce the facility's aggregate annual energy consumption for the whole building or uh, the treated area of the data center uh, by at least 10%, and uh, the applicant must be in good standing uh, with the Maryland Department of Assessments and Taxation. Next slide, please. Yep. Since the program is a competitive grant program, uh, each application is reviewed uh, by a review team uh, for the demonstration of energy efficiency best practices or innovative technologies. Cost effectiveness in combination with energy savings, project feasibility, completeness, accuracy, reasonable energy savings, and cost estimates, as well as the diversity of energy efficiency measures or technologies. Next slide, please. Um, some of the program results um, over the past five years, uh, MEA was able to upgrade 14 different projects through the program. Uh, these projects have ranged from a Maryland State University, uh, Maryland Public School System, uh, standalone data centers, and one of the largest healthcare providers in the United States. Uh, some of the upgrades uh, were computer room air conditioning units or crack units, uh, typical lighting measures and controls, and airflow optimization. Uh, in 2018, the data center program was actually selected uh, from over 200 global entries as a finalist in the industry initiative of the year category uh, that was presented by uh, Data Center Dynamics. Next slide, please. As you can see um, on this slide, these were our program results from 2017. Um, sadly, due to the you know COVID-19 pandemic, MEA actually had two projects from uh, fiscal year 2019. Uh, we run on a fiscal year starting July 1 to June 30th that ended up being canceled. Uh, the remaining projects in 2019 and 2020 are still uh, underway, and MEA will hope to post the updates uh, once when the installations are completed. MEA hopes to um, announce the FY21 awardees um, sometime in the next month. Uh, all the applications are, are currently being reviewed and uh, subject to funding availability. Uh, we hope to plan to run the uh, FY22 data center program as well. The, the data center program typically has a budget of around you know, $500,000 
per fiscal year. Um, as you can see in 2017, 2020, we're sort of the anomaly. Um, we were able to increase our budget uh, due to the demand of the actual program itself. Um, as you can see, the total project costs of all these projects are um, you know, a little over $7 million. And we're only really only able to, to give out $1.9 uh, million over the, over the four years so far. Um, these projects are estimated to save uh, a little over $10 million in kilowatt hours annually. And uh, these projects are gonna be estimated to save $844,000 annually. And I'll uh, go into some utility incentives um, in, in my uh, best practices. Next slide, please. The next two uh, slides are gonna be case studies uh, that were completed um, by uh, the program. Uh, this one is Kaiser Permanente. Uh, they have a data center of 60,000 square feet uh, standalone facility that is located in Silver Spring, Maryland. They were awarded a $200,000 grant in uh, fiscal year 2017. Uh, they're, they're saving over $228,000 annually per year. Uh, for the installation of the constant speed fans with variable speed fans in the computer room, uh, air conditioning unit. Uh, and they upgraded the controls to more energy efficient uh, modes and models for monitoring for opportunities to save energy and reduce operating costs. Uh, the actual total cost of the project was $1.5 million. Uh, they were able to leverage funding from their utility uh, as well as a grant from MEA. Um, Kaiser Permanente actually also received a uh, fiscal year 2020 data center award uh, for an upgrade of a 250 ton chiller that will use the chilled water um, for the, from the race for the data center. Uh, currently that project is still, still ongoing. So we hope to have final results of that in the upcoming year. Next slide, please. Uh, the next case study uh, is the Montgomery County Public School System. Uh, Montgomery County Public School Data Center operates, monitors, and provides technical support for central servers and related equipment, allowing 24-hour access to a central student and administrative databases, as well as payroll, student attendance and enrollment, retirement, asset management, financial management, report cards, as well as online ordering. Uh, they were awarded a $127,000 grant in 2018 that is expected to save them uh, $21,000 annually in energy savings, and they're saving $180,695 in kilowatt hours per year, uh, which is enough to roughly power 600 laptop computers uh, for eight hours. The upgrades included server virtualization, the replacement and migration of storage area networks, to reduce energy consumption of servers, airflow optimization, including rack enclosures, cooling blanking panels. Um, with the energy savings through the program, the Montgomery County Public Schools plans to reinvest the grant funding to procure software that will give insight into server usage that is not presently available. Uh, this would facilitate and encourage more informed decisions in prioritizing and pursuing larger ticket and cost items where energy savings and efficiencies could be realized. Next slide, please. Some of the best practices uh, that I've learned through the data center uh, program are being able to leverage any utility incentives um, that can be used to draw down efficiency project capital. Uh, to date, MEA has seen uh, grantees use $822,269 in utility incentives with another 127,458 projected. Uh, we like to see more comprehensive retrofits. Uh, data centers are highly energy intensive and will continue to see significant growth in the upcoming years. Uh, better efficiency reduces carbon emissions and demand on the power grid. Next slide, please. Uh, more best practices. Uh, being able to quantify performance uh, it is often best practices to install a system or unit level metering to quantify pre and post project performance to give more accurate data. Uh, the Energy Star program may be used to benchmark existing data center performance against peers 
and set performance targets for energy projects. Uh, resilience and uptime, uh, being able to improve efficiency often results in reduction in operating and maintenance costs and will allow reinvesting the savings elsewhere. The replacement of equipment before the end of its useful life can improve data center reliability. Um, actually, in some cases, it can be cost effective to employ natural gas or other renewable fuels um, or even combine heat and power systems to the data center. Next slide, please. Data centers are such a large energy consumer, consumers and the amount of energy they consume is expected to grow in the upcoming years. Uh, data centers can and perhaps should be leaders in reducing the energy and environmental impact through low carbon pathways. They can also support the grid during periods of peak demand. The facility operates under generator power or even the generator can feed back power onto the grid. Um, once again, um, thank you for the opportunity to, to speak today. And uh, here is my contact information if you have any additional questions. Thank you. Great. Uh, thanks, David, for, for sharing um, you know, great information about your, uh, the program as well as some case studies and lessons learned. Um, I think that will be helpful for, for a lot of folks. Um, so before we jump into the Q&A for some of our panelists, I see um, some questions we've got here. We actually have another poll. We'd love to hear from you on what are some key takeaways um, that, you, um, that you've received from today's lesson. So um, if you close down uh, your browser on your phone or, your, or, um, or the website, uh, please open up a new browser and type in slido.com hashtag uh, DOE uh, as your um, as your um, uh, code, and we'd love to hear from you. What are some key takeaways so far from um, from today's panelists? Just give folks just a minute to enter in uh, any key takeaways that that you've had, and then we'll um, open up the uh, question. All right. Um, again, love to hear from you. Uh, any key takeaways that you have? And um, if I can ask the, uh, Hannah and David if you could turn on your videos and we can jump into um, the Q&A section. Um, so some, uh, we've got um, some really good questions that have come in. Um, the first question is related to, uh, to COVID. And um, David, I'll ask this of you. Um, what um, has been uh, your experience, uh, maybe with some of your grant grantees on, uh, or what they've been talking about? You know, how has data centers been impacted by um, the pandemic, particularly like if they have a data center in an office, the office isn't, um, uh, you know, doesn't have a, has low occupancy. Have you heard anything from them on how they're dealing with that and what their experience has been? Yeah, um, that is a very good question. Um, a lot of the grantees that I actually have been working with, um, you know, some of them are working from home, but, you know, due to urgent matters, they can go to the facilities and stuff like that. Um, you know, data centers are 24 seven operational. So, you know, sometimes they may have, you know, one or, you know, two employees there just being really safe um, to make sure that everything's, um, you know, working properly. Awesome. Um, that, that is helpful. Uh, the, the next question, uh, maybe Hannah to you, and then maybe also David, if you want to chime in as well, um, can you give some examples of com commonly implemented ECMs? And then there was another question about like, what are the two top ten, top two energy efficiency measures? Um, you want to talk about maybe from Hannah, from your perspective, some of the commonly ECMs that um, the center of expertise works on, and then maybe David, I know you showed a lot of ECMs up there that um, are part of the incentives program, but maybe if you want to touch on that as well. So yeah, Hannah, you want to go first? Oh, I think you're on mute. <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, air management is really a huge, um, you know, can consume a huge portion of data center um, energy consumption overall. So looking at ways to, you know, reduce the pooling costs for data centers is kind of one of the main, um, I guess, buckets of ECMs, um, if you will. 
So, you know, that can mean turning up the temperature a few degrees, relaxing humidity requirements, and also making sure that um, there's aisle containment so that to reduce mixing of hot and cold air. So making sure that um, that, that is, is efficient. And there's a lot of kind of smaller ECMs within um, effective air management. Um, and I think another important one is looking at utilization, you know, decommissioning servers that are not um, really being used and also consolidating um, servers and, you know, also um, integrating, you know, metering and monitoring and DCIM um, uh, systems to actually, you know, track what's going on can also um, pave the way for, for determining what UCMs you should be looking at. And I guess I'll hand it over to David for any other T thing that should be thrown there. <laughs> Yeah, those are a lot of the ones that, you know, we work with at MEA. Um, I'll also add, you know, HVAC upgrades, you know, as well as lighting, obviously low hanging fruit with lighting um, and stuff like that. There's are and, and chiller upgrades. Those are really the three main ones as long as it, and with everything else that you pointed out as well. And I think going back to um, at the beginning when we talked about, you know, there's opportunity between 20 and 40 percent, you know, on average in a data center for um, energy uh, cost savings. I think that a lot of that is attributed to some of the ECMs you're talking about, air management, HVAC upgrades, um, lighting. Um, so um, I, those would be the, the first places to look for some um, energy cost saving opportunities uh, if folks out there are looking for them. Um, the next question, um, David, is for you. Uh, there was a question about, you know, um, how, what were your utility incentives based on, and then how, what is the process that you guys go about uh, validating them? Yeah, so the utility incentives are based on uh, Empower Maryland. Uh, it's a, it's a funded through a charge uh, through the Maryland ratepayers utility bills. Um, we, they have a, you know, a prescribed program as well as a custom measure. Um, so whatever they're allowed up to 50 or 75 percent for the custom measure. Um, so that's the sort of the utility incentive that they can get, at least in the state of Maryland. You know, I don't know about, you know, all over the U.S., but that's what we work with uh, for the state. Great. Uh, that's that's helpful. I think I'm familiar with a lot of other utility programs that are set up that way, too, with, with that custom that can be a catch all for um, for for data center upgrades. Um, so that's helpful. Um, so if one was to, Hannah, if one was to look at, um, you know, what they can do jumping into um, either their data center or they know of a data center with opportunities, you know, you talked about the business case website. Um, I think that that's really helpful and really well organized um, for folks to try and understand what opportunities are. But there are a lot of resources in, that, in the uh, business case website. Can you talk about a little bit about some of those resources that are available right now to, to folks to help um, identify uh, opportunities and get started working on energy projects. Yeah, so a lot of them are um, are ones that we have developed here at the Center of Expertise, but we also pulled other um, tools and resources from um, other organizations and, and literature and things like that. So we have a lot of our very popular tools linked there sort of in the appropriate spot, like our DC data center um, pro, pool, pro tool, which allows you to put in some you know, input specific to your data center and kind of look at a list of recommended ECMs. So actually that would be something I would look at for the person who asked about ECMs, um, as well as our, you know, guides on temperature and humidity measurements and just all kinds of um, uh, kind of operational guidance that we have um, developed. And additionally, we also have a lot of great case studies and links to um, anything from, you know, procurement, um, you know, how to make sure you're purchasing Energy Star servers to, you know, databases of utility incentives um, and, you know, state energy incentive programs like the one that David talked about. So we also have uh, case studies, you know, there's just a lot of different types of resources um, that come into play. So it's a good place to kind of get started and explore, you know, what we have and also what is out there, um, you know, generally for data center energy efficiency. And that's a good transition into maybe it wasn't a question, but uh, a comment that was put in the in the Q and A. So, um, so as part of the business case website, there's a master list of all the ECMs you know you could really be doing in a data center. One of the the comments was you know going into more um, details about examples of an energy efficiency measure. 
David, do you want to, is there a particular EC, ECM that you want to, that would be good to dive into from one of the examples you had on your, um, um, on your, on one of your slides? Yeah, um, let me go back real quick. Could you go to, Hannah, do you have anything while I, while I look up something real quick? I'm sorry. Sorry, so specifically for, um, just to talk a little deeper about a particular ECM? Yeah, maybe it would be helpful, Hannah, describing some of, I guess, more of like how the buckets of how you know, ECMs are kind of um, organized, and then David can talk about a particular ECM and diving into uh, more detail on it. Yeah, so I think, I mean, one thing that comes to mind is, I think it, uh, I'm thinking our master list of energy efficiency actions would be a really good thing for, you know, whoever's asking this to take a look at. Um, and so I think, you know, ECMs can kind of be looked at through, you know, air management, um, and, you know, then IT equipment, so taking a look at what servers are underutilized and, like, needs to be consolidated, as I mentioned previously. Um, also, uh, monitoring and, and controls. Um, and, you know, we also have one other way, and also, of course, in, um, you know, the cooling, cooling plants. Um, and another, another, uh, another resource that we have, I think it's our, um, I think it's our small data center guide talks about divide ECMs by the level of effort. So I think that also is a really helpful resource because you can kind of see, okay, what are maybe some low hanging fruits that I can, um, you know, pick off and, um, you know, versus which ECMs are going to be a more significant list, both um, from a technical and probably a financial perspective. Yeah, and, and we'll, we have a link to that website, um, uh, which has that master list as well as a, that document that is now that prioritizes ECMs by effort as opposed to maybe, you know, potential savings. You know, you can get started right away with, um, you know, kind of low level effort um, uh, measures. Um, so that might be helpful for folks too. Um, uh, let's see, we've got about one or two more minutes. David, did you want to touch on anything else in that question, or we can also move on to talk about some of the resources? Yes, yeah, so um, I'll, I'll go with uh, Kaiser Permanente. They upgraded a computer room air conditioning unit, uh, which is just a usual device that monitors and maintains the temperature, air distri distribution, and humidity in a network room or a data center. Uh, the units are replacing air conditioning units that were used in the past, the cool data center, so you know it's a relatively new technology. Okay, that that is helpful, and I think um, for those out there looking looking to learn more about um, about different ECMs, I think again maybe that's in the next slide. We have a list of, of links that you can go to to learn more, and then you of course can can reach out to us as well. Um, so I think that's all the time we have for Q and A. If you have further questions, um, feel free to reach out to us, um, or you can put them in the the Q and A in Slido, and we can we can also answer them there. If you can go to the next slide, please. Um, so here's the here's the list of resources there, um, and that last um, website, that center of expertise for energy efficiency and data centers, that's the link that Hannah's talking about. You can go in there and find um, uh, the list of um, all the ECMs that you could think of for in data centers. That link is also available through the Better Building Solution Center. So if you go to the tool, go to the um, data center accelerator page, the toolkit, the sector page, all of them, you can. Um, end up getting to that to the, that center of expertise, that website that has a lot of different um, resources. And if you can go to the next slide, um, I'm I'm uh, we can transition to um, what's upcoming um, and where you can learn more about data centers, which is um, the 2021 Better Buildings uh, Better Plants Summit. Um, so registration is now open. Uh, the summit is taking place May 17th through 20th, and we'll be featuring engaging and interactive sessions along with opportunities to, for attendees to network with uh, their fellow industry peers and experts. Um, you can learn more and register for this virtual at no cost event um, at the Better Building Solution Center today. So when you go in there and check out information that we have on data centers, you can also go and register for the Better Buildings uh, Better Plant Summit. Um, and if you can go to the next slide. Um, 
So as I mentioned, that this webinar is part of a series. It's part of the 2020-2021 webinar series. Um, this is our final webinar in this series, but we look forward to um, seeing you um, this summer during our summer series, um, which is um, as well as our 2021-2022 webinar series. So we're just going to continue doing lots of lots of webinars and those webinar topics will be announced soon. Um, but you can always go back and look at the recorded webinars as part of this um, series. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, we also encourage you to uh, visit the new workforce development portal that's uh, part of the Better Buildings website. Um, you can take the next step towards uh, a career in energy efficiency and get resources, information, training, education, and job opportunities. So encourage you to check it out. And if you can go to the next slide. Um, as I mentioned, you can watch the recordings of um, Better Buildings, uh, the Better Buildings Virtual Summit, uh, which was last year, the 2020 Summer Webinar Series, um, and other technical presentations from National Labs, um, as well as um, uh, you know webinars that are, have been a part of uh, this webinar series. So we encourage you to check it out. It's a really great resource with lots of great presentations. And then you can go to the next slide. Here's our contact information. If you have more questions, feel free to reach out to us. I want to thank um, our panelists very much, uh, David and Hannah, for um, uh, for your time today and talking to us of we'll all your resources, information you have available. Um, again, feel free to contact our presenters or me if you have additional questions um, and, or if your question wasn't answered during the Q&A period. I encourage everyone out there to follow the Better Buildings Initiative on Twitter. Uh, for the latest uh, latest news and information on Better Buildings, you'll receive an email notice um, when this session is archived and then available on demand in the Solution Center um, to, to watch again if you're interested in it. Um, thank you again, and I um, uh, hope to see you at the uh, Better Buildings uh, Summit in, uh, in May. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>